हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल सो लेट अस कंटिन्यू इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक्स ओके दिस इज़ द सेकेंड वीडियो ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर लेसन इन द फर्स्ट वीडियो वी हैव सीन द मीनिंग ऑफ इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक्स ओपन मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक ओके ओपन इकोनॉमी मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स बेसिकली दीज टू आर द सेम थिंग वी हैव सीन दैट यू नो एन इकोनॉमी इज सेट टू बी एन ओपन इकोनॉमी वेन देर आर ट्रांजेक्शन्स टेकिंग प्लेस बिटवीन one country and the another country so that transactions are very important and as part of transactions we have seen that you know there is always something that we are giving and something that we are receiving in return right so that is known as transactions uh we have also seen the balance of payments right balance of payments and basically balance of payment is nothing but the systematic record of these transactions only right whatever is happening between two countries or between one country and the rest of the world so that is balance of payments uh in these transactions friends we come to know that uh, you know whenever this foreign transactions are taking place so one very basic understanding we should keep in mind that say for example if india is you know transacting with usa okay it can be both ways so for example if india is importing something from usa so india will have to pay to the us uh, exporters right people who are selling from us to india so people from india who are importing goods from usa they will have to pay to usa right similarly when india is exporting to usa usa people will pay to india right they will have to pay now the problem of currency comes here see this usa people the india the indian people who are paying to usa for the imports you know uh, indian people they will have to pay in dollars because uh, you know usa shopkeepers or usa manufacturers service providers they will not accept rupees because it is of no use to them dollars is of use to them similarly when usa people will pay to india indian people they will have to pay in rupees and not in dollars because in india uh, rupee will be useful this is a very rudimentary thing i am trying to explain it to you so basically what is happening here in on this in all this transaction we are in a way generating the demand for dollar and also demand for rupees right so how much ever is india you know supplying goods to the rest of the world to other countries that much demand for rupees will be there okay similarly how much ever india is importing from the rest of the world from other countries that much demand for foreign currency will be there clear so demand for foreign currency it uh, it initiates in you know this transactions only okay and this is not just for goods and services but for investments also for example if there is a us investor he wants to invest in india so in india he will have to invest in rupees terms so basically he will need rupees to invest in india similarly if somebody from india is investing in usa he will need dollars so here there is a demand for dollar when somebody from india is investing in usa so please try to understand this basic concept and from here only the main concept of foreign exchange market comes out okay because see i have explained it to you in lesson number 11 a also when we had discussed about different types of markets different kinds of markets foreign exchange market is one of the markets right the other markets are real markets real sector markets right then there are labor markets or factors of production markets correct there there are different kinds of markets uh, there are financial markets also money market financial markets foreign exchange market is also an important market when it comes to economics so we have already seen it uh, so again you know whenever it comes to market there is a demand there is a supply right so here we are looking at demand and supply of what we are looking at demand and supply of the foreign currency okay this is a demand and supply of foreign currency for simplification let us assume that foreign currency is dollar okay so on y axis there is always the price and on x axis there is always the quantity so since we are looking at the foreign exchange market let us say that on x axis there is quantity of dollar okay and on y axis there is price of dollar price of dollar in rupees term in local currency now price of dollar in rupees term is nothing but exchange rate this also i have already explained to you for example if you want to buy 1 if you are paying 50 rupees that means what this is the exchange rate that 1 dollar is equal to 50 rupees and this is also the price of 1 dollar in local currency so basically exchange rate is nothing but price of foreign currency in terms of local currency okay please keep this in mind 
Now there is a demand, downward sloping demand curve. Why? Because a normal demand curve is downward sloping as the price of foreign currency increases, less and less people will demand that foreign currency. Similarly, if you know the price of foreign currency increases, more and more people will want to supply it. So this is a simple, uh, you know, demand supply curve. Okay. The demand supply curve is also known as a Marshallian cross. This is just for your information. Okay. Marshallian cross. <clears throat> Marshall was an economist and he had kind of first time uh, propounded this theory of demand and supply cross. So that's why this cross is also known as Marshallian cross. Okay, but this is just an additional information I'm giving it to you. Uh, so we see that wherever the demand and supply intersect, uh, you know, uh, the equilibrium point, this is the equilibrium point. So we get the equilibrium quantity, equilibrium quantity here. So this is the equilibrium quantity of dollar in the market and we also get the equilibrium price. So this is the equilibrium exchange rates. So uh, let us continue. So basically we see that price of one currency in terms of another currency is known as exchange rate, right? I've already explained it to you. Now see, there are two ways to define exchange rates. Okay. We can define exchange rate in two ways. One is we can say the amount of domestic currency to buy one unit of foreign currency, meaning uh, how much rupees we will have to pay to buy one dollar. Okay. So here we are asking in terms of domestic currency, how many, okay, how many rupees to buy one dollar? This is the question. So this is one way of looking at exchange rate. Similarly, there is another way of looking at exchange rate, which is amount of foreign currency to buy one unit of domestic currency, meaning how many dollars how many dollars to buy one rupee okay so you look at these two different questions one is how many rupees to buy one dollar and how many dollar to buy one rupees okay we can we can define exchange rate in two ways so the example of first is that you know 50 rupees for one dollar or in other either other definition we can say two cents for one rupee or 0 0.02 dollar for one rupee correct it is the same See, for example, if 50 rupees is equal to $1, therefore 1 rupees is equal to 1 upon $50, which is $0 $0.02 or 2 cents, correct? So we are basically, you know, it is the same thing. It is actually the same thing. These two definitions are talking about the same thing, exchange rate, but these are just two different ways of looking at it. Okay, these are two sides of the same coin. So since these two things are same, this is this is the symmetry there is a symmetry in exchange rate right this is known as symmetry meaning they two are they these two exactly show the same thing okay when if you say that two cents for one rupee or 50 rupees for one dollar it is exactly the same thing it is just like saying that a is father of b or b is son of a okay it is exactly the same thing we say that a uh, b ka pitaji hai ya b a ka putra hai so it is the same thing okay it is just the same thing However, in economics literature, we use the first definition. Okay, this one, the amount of domestic currency to buy one unit of foreign currency. And also in our local, you know, layman terms also, we use that, that definition only. We, uh, you know, whenever you ask any local, uh, you know, any layman and you ask them about the exchange rate, they will say, oh, exchange rate is that, you know, 80 rupees for one dollar. Okay. Or, uh, you know, 100 rupees for one pound, something like that. So he will always say in this term, he will never say he for one rupees, it is two cents. Okay. Or for one rupee, it is one dime, something like that. So this is never used by layman also. Economics literature also mostly focuses on this only 80 rupees for one dollar or hundred rupees for one pound. So we use the first definition. Now this definition of exchange rate, that is price of foreign currency in terms of domestic currency is also called as bilateral nominal exchange rate. See bilateral meaning between two countries. Okay. Whenever we use the term bilateral, bilateral means between two countries or two parties that is known as bilateral. Okay. It is between two and nominal exchange rate. This I'll explain it to you why it is called nominal. Okay. Or simply nominal exchange rate NER. Okay, nominal it is called because see here we are not getting any information about, uh, you know, what is the real value of the currency? What is the purchasing power of that currency that we are not getting any information. So nominal means the price of foreign currency is quoted in money terms. Okay, we are just saying 
फिफ्टी रुपीज़ पर डॉलर और हंड्रेड रुपीज़ पर पाउंड और यू नो पॉइंट फाइव रुपीज़ पर येन समथिंग लाइक दैट ओके फिफ्टी पैसा पर येन सो वी आर नॉट एबल टू गेट एनी इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट यू नो वेदर दिस इज़ गुड और बैड और यू नो सी हियर वील से दैट यू नो वन येन विच इज़ अ जैपनीज येन इज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली से फिफ्टी पैसा ओके सो डज इट मीन दैट जैपैन इज़ अ पुअर कंट्री दैन इंडिया दैट यू नो देयर करेंसी इज जस्ट हाफ एज वैल्यूएबल एज आर्स नो वी कैनॉट से दैट सो दिस इज दैट इज वाइट इज नोन एज नॉमिनल बिकॉज वी आर लुकिंग एट ओनली इन मनी टर्म्स वी डोंट नो एनी थिंग अबाउट द रियल वैल्यू और द रियल परचेसिंग पावर ऑफ दैट सो बेसिकली नॉमिनल एक्सचेंज रेट्स डू नॉट गिव अस एनी इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द वेलफेयर ऑफ अ कंट्री ओके दे डू नॉट गिव अस एनी इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफ अ वेलफेयर ऑफ अ कंट्री वेदर इट इज गुड और बैड सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल से टूडे वन डॉलर इज से फिफ्टी रुपीज एंड टूमोरो वन डॉलर बिकम्स से सिक्सटी रुपीज सो वी रियली डोंट नो वेदर इंडिया इंडिया हैज यू नो डिग्रेडेड इन वेलफेयर और नॉट ओके और वेदर अमेरिका हैज डन बेटर दैन इंडिया नो दिस इज नॉट एन इंडिकेशन सो वेलफेयर डिपेंड्स ऑन परचेसिंग पावर ऑफ द पीपल दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो वॉट इज अ वेलफेयर डिपेंड्स इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द परचेसिंग पावर ऑफ पीपल सी आई एल एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू विद अ वेरी सिंपल एग्जाम्पल हियर फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ देर इज अ पर्सन ए इन इंडिया एंड ही इज अर्निंग फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पर मंथ ओके फ्रेंड्स इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक्स is a little technical subject so it will take me some time to explain it to you also you may also uh, watch this video again and again then you will understand okay so let us assume that a is a is a person in india and he is earning 50000 per month simple and assume that there is another person b in usa and he is earning 500 dollars per month so he is earning in dollars he is earning in rupees in their respective countries Now let us assume that the exchange rate is say fifty rupees per dollar. Okay, exchange rate between India and USA is fifty rupees per dollar. So let us look at income of A in dollar terms. So A was earning fifty thousand rupees. So what will be his income in dollar terms? Okay, you divide it by exchange rate fifty rupees. So he is earning thousand dollars in India. He is earning thousand dollars in India. Now you compare the income of A with the income of B. okay we see that a is better of than b even though the exchange rate is 50 rupees per dollar so here we are comparing two people okay one person is in india he is earning 50000 per month another person is earning 500 dollar uh, per month in usa now we divide the income of uh, a with the exchange rate so we get it in dollar terms so in dollar terms he is earning 1000 dollars okay so we see that even if the exchange rate is 50 rupees uh, per dollar right uh, you know we have to pay 50 rupees for 1 dollar so that is how the layman usually confuse it okay that we are paying 50 units of our currency to buy one unit of their currency and uh, we are seeing that you know uh, we will say that okay india is a uh, you know poorer country or india is uh, you know not doing well when it comes to usa so here we see that when we compare the incomes of people in the same currency a is earning more than b right a is earning more than b so we cannot say anything that you know that uh, you know this person is uh, uh, is uh, because he is earning in rupees he 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 is not better off so here when we compare the nominal incomes again these are the nominal incomes okay because we are only looking at the monetary value of what they are earning so we can say that from here that a is better off than b okay okay theek hai a a ka income b se zyada hai these are the nominal incomes secondly but again see the story does not end here the welfare also depends on the price levels in the economy okay so basically when we include the price levels we will get to know how much of the different goods and services this person is able to buy ultimately welfare means what welfare means how much you are able to consume how much you are able to fulfill your wishes how much you are able to enjoy your life that is your welfare okay and most of the things which you will consume you will have to pay price for it right they are not free so price levels what is the price level in the economy that will also matter so again continuing the same example assume that uh, you know only one good is there in the economy and the price of that good in india is 500 rupees okay that only one good is required to sustain life and price of that good is 500 rupees now with 50000 rupees a can buy 100 units of that good right because price of one unit is 500 his income is 50000 so with 50000 rupees he can buy 100 units of that goods now say that the price of the same good in usa is 5 dollars so with 500 dollar income of b 
he can also buy 100 units of good of this good so see comparatively if we look at the prices if we look at the prices the price level in india is high right if you because if you convert this price into dollar terms okay 500 rupees divided by the 50 rupees that is your exchange rate in dollar term it will be 10 10 dollars so one unit of that good in india is 10 dollars whereas one unit in, in usa is only five dollars so even though the income of b in nominal terms was less than that of a they both are you know equally happy they both have the same welfare so in welfare terms even if income of b in comparison to a was less when compared in the same currency both are equally well off because both can buy the same unit of goods with their respective incomes okay so how much how much goods you are able to buy from your income that is that is what it matters for welfare so real incomes of a and b are same because both have the same purchasing power so your real income real income will depend on your uh, okay real income will determine your purchasing power purchasing power meaning how many goods and services you can buy with whatever income you have and that will depend on what that will depend on the price for example if you are earning 50000 rupees and the price of that good is 500 you can buy 100 units if you are earning 50000 rupees and the price is uh, say 100 you can buy 500 units so like that so depends on the price level right so real income is basically your nominal income divided by the price level in the economy so always remember this is correlation real to nominal is always this relation real is always equal to nominal divided by the price okay so from here the concept of real exchange rate emerges so uh, after discussing all this we, re we realize that nominal exchange rates are not that important okay nominal exchange rates are not important what what is important is real exchange rate we should look at the real exchange rate because real exchange rate will give you the actual comparison of two countries that how much of uh, you know welfare is there in one country with respect to another country and that is given to you by the real exchange rate and we will discuss this in the next video i hope you have understood this if you have not understood anything please message me in the comment section i'll try to resolve your doubts thank you